Today I'll show you a quick trick to get better performance out of your C6000 DSP. If you are new to C6000 DSP programming, or you're just starting out to tune your DSP code, this video may help. There are eight functional units on the C6000 DSP, and keeping as many of the functional units busy at one time will get you better performance. But how do you know if the compiler has generated code to keep as many of these units busy as possible? A part of answering that question is knowing how to look at the software pipeline feedback information that is listed in the assembly files that the compiler generates. So let's back up a minute and start with software pipelining. Software pipelining is a compiler optimization that helps the compiler keep as many of those functional units busy as possible. It tries to overlap successive iterations of a loop. For more information on software pipelining, check out the link in the description below. When you use dash MW or the dash dash debug software pipeline compiler option, additional information is printed for each software pipeline loop. I'm going to go over a couple key pieces of this information. Shown here is a function with a simple loop that performs a vector sum. So let's compile it with full optimization dash 03 and with the dash K option, the dash dash keep asm option. Now let's bring up the assembly code and scroll down to the software pipeline loop information comment block. In software pipelining, the faster we can start successive iterations of the loop, the faster our loop will run. We can see here that our initiation interval, or how often we start successive iterations, is seven cycles. Here, we can see the loop carry dependence bound is seven cycles. We can also see that our partition resource bound is two cycles. The maximum of the loop carry dependence bound and the partitioned resource bound says what the minimum number of cycles needs to be between starting successive iterations of the loop. We want these numbers to be as low as possible for maximum performance. The partitioned resource bound calculates if I spread the loop's instructions onto as many functional units as possible how low the initiation interval can be. The loop carry dependence bound is a measure of what data flow constraints are getting in the way of making this loop faster. Sometimes there is a data value that the iteration of a loop produces that feeds into the next iteration of the loop. This may cause the next iteration to wait until that value is produced by the current iteration. More often, there is a memory dependence causing the higher loop carry dependence bound. For example, a load instruction at the top of a loop may depend on the store at the end of a previous iteration. However, if those two memory operations read and write different portions of memory, that dependence is a false dependence. I can tell that's what's going on in this case, because in the single scheduled iteration comment, there are caret symbols telling me what instructions are on this loop carry dependence. And these symbols lead from the loads to the stores. So that's what we have in this case. The compiler thinks that the store may generate a value that the load reads. If, as a programmer, we know that the input pointers point to a different array than the output pointer, we can help the compiler with this information. The loop carry dependence bound is much higher than the partition resource bound. So that tells me we have a data dependence problem. It might be real or it might not be. In this case, I know it's not real. So let's put the restrict keyword on the output pointer because say we know that in the function that calls this function that the output pointer does not point to the input pointer memory. A fuller explanation of the restrict keyword is in the description below. But in summary this restrict keyword says that for the scope of this pointer the memory pointed to by this variable will only be accessed through this variable and not accessed via another variable. So let's put the restrict keyword in and see what happens. So let's compile our code again. As you can see, we've now reduced the loop carry dependence bound and now the initiation interval is lower. 
which means our loop is running faster. As you can see, there's a lot of other information in this software pipeline information comment block, and much of it can be used to tell how well the compiler is optimizing your loop. Much more information about the software pipeline loop information can be found in the description below. There is a wiki link, as well as a link to an application report optimizing loops on the C66 DSP. Both have some great tips on optimizing your code and helping the compiler optimize your code so that you can get the most performance out of the C6000 DSP.